Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry and today I want to talk about the Godzilla Criterion set. Now, I just got this thing in and wow, it is huge. It is basically a coffee table book. And uh, we need to talk about Criterion's 1000 release and what it stacks up for when it comes to Godzilla fans. Now, when it comes to Godzilla fan and home video releases in America, we've never gotten the goods. Toho has always held out and kept all the good stuff in Japan and is kind of notorious for screwing over a lot of distributors who've tried to put the movies out with special features in America. We've had commentary tracks for like Godzilla vs. Megalon withheld because of Toho. We've had a lot of stuff scrapped, including a lot of different dubs like teacher dubs. So I wanted to go through this set, collecting the uh, 15 movies of the Showa set. Now... Once again, we kind of get screwed over on special features. On the back here, there's one of those little, like, papers. Uh, you see this a lot on, like, steel case and stuff. Well, you got it on this one, too, and I left it on here so I could talk about this 8 Blu-ray Special Edition Collector Set. Now, uh, here's what it says for special features. High-definition digital transfers of all 15 Godzilla films made between 1954 and 1975, released together for the first time with uncompressed... Mono, 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 rule soundtrack. I don't know what that word is. High definition digital transfers of Godzilla King of the Monsters, the 1956 US uh, release version of Godzilla, and the 1962 Japanese release version of King Kong vs. Godzilla. And that's one of the big things that everyone in America has always wanted the uncut Japanese version of Godzilla vs. King Kong that we've never gotten here in the States. We've got audio commentaries from 2011 on Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters featuring film historian David Collat. Now, this was actually in the previous Criterion release of Godzilla, and they are good commentaries, but it is kind of sad to see that the only commentaries we get are those, considering a lot of these films actually do have American commentaries by people like um, Steve... Godzeski? How do you say your last name? No, it's Steve Rifle and Ed Godzeski. Still screwed up your last name. We only do it proper here. So it was kind of sad to see that we didn't see those come over. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm going to go into later, don't sell your old DVDs or Blu-rays. So anyway, international English language dub tracks for Invasion of Astro Monster, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and Terra of Mechagodzilla. That means, I think, we've got the English ver versions of Godzilla vs. King of the Monsters, Invasion of National Monsters, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla vs. Megalon, uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Terra Mechagodzilla, and I think the Godzilla vs. King Kong uh, English dub is on here also. Uh, that leaves us with five, six, seven, eight. Eight English versions out of the 15 movies. And for most of those, we only got the English dubs. Which means we're missing great, great Americanized dubs like the Teacher Studio ones. Once again, hold on to your old VHS and DVD sets. The Directors Guild of Japan interview with director Ishiro Honda conducted by director Yashimitsu Bano in 1990. Something that has been out there already. Programs detailing the creation of Godzilla special effects and unused effects sequences from Toho releases including Destroy All Monsters. Some of this we definitely have had out before. Some of it you've probably never seen because it's never really came out in America, but you can find it if you know where you're looking, especially on YouTube. A new interview with filmmaker Alex Cock about his admiration for the Showa-era Godzilla films. New and archival interviews with cast and crew members, including actors Ben Ferrer, which you know from Ultraman, uh, a, a bunch of other people, and I'm going to mess up a lot of their names, Tegushi, to, Tezugu Tuoshi, Kamado, Haru Nakajima, and Akira Takarada, composer Akira Fukube, and effects technician Yoshiro Ire and Izo Kaimai. Now, if you listen to Underwater Country from Outer Space podcast that I do, you know I normally have done, do all the Japanese names because I can't do them. And part of it's because I have a speech impediment and it's hard for me to pronounce uh, certain things unless I really concentrate on them and it would take me forever to do that so I'm not doing it. We have an interview with credit with credit with critic uh, Tato Sato from 2011 
an illustrated audio essay from 2011 about the real-life tragedy that inspired Godzilla, trailers, new English subtitle translations, which that can be very good, plus a lavishly illustrated deluxe hardcover book featuring an essay by cinema historian Steve Rifle, notes on the film by uh, cinema historian Ed Gatsuwesi, Ed, Ed Gatsuwesi, God, Ed, I love your work, but I can never say your damn last name. Love you. New illustrations by Arthur Adams, Sophie Campbell, Becky Clue, whole bunch of people did illustrations for this. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't know, the 15 movies are Godzilla, Godzilla Raised Again, King Kong vs. Godzilla, Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, Invasion of Astro Monster, Ever Horror of the Deep, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, All Monsters Attack, Godzilla vs. Sidora, Godzilla vs. Gaigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and Terra of Mechagodzilla. Now, with that being said, is the $150 to $200 you spend on this worth it? It's kind of half full for me. Um, I bought it because I collect Godzilla stuff, but it's still not the ultimate set, and in America, to be honest, I don't think we ever will. So let's open this up and take a look. Now, uh, the art that's done in this book, while beautiful, a lot of it does not fit the show air. Why is the Godzilla we're getting more close to the Heisei Godzilla than the Showa Godzilla? That's a problem for me. I'm not, I don't like that. Like, that is a Heisei Godzilla. 100%. And well, why is it pink? I've got nothing against pink. In fact, I find this looks pretty cool, but it's like a pop art style. Not like a classic Japanese style. So, we open the book and we get... A great picture. As we go and see, we get contents, we get the Reign of Destruction essay, which is, is pretty good. It's pretty long. We've got another look at Godzilla. Now we're going to start getting into the movies. This is really hard to keep open, by the way. Godzilla Raids again. Now, uh, we did a podcast on Underwater right Casual where we kind of broke down all the artwork. So you can check that out, but uh, some of them are a fan of, some of them not. I really like this artwork right here. Not a fan of the King Kong vs. Godzilla artwork. Mothra vs. Godzilla, I, I like Mothra's look. I'm not, I don't know what's going on with Godzilla here. A little too dinosaur for me. Uh, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, I get what they were going for, that classic Japanese art style. Still not a fan of it. Uh, Invasion of Astro Monster, a scene that uh, you either love it or hate it, is done here. And you know what? I actually kind of like this one, even though I think Ghidorah does not look good. We've got Ebra, Horror of the Deep. And you know what? I actually really like this one. I think this artwork is actually pretty neat, even though I don't get why Godzilla and Mothra have outlines on them, almost making them look like they're clip art. Uh, Son of Godzilla, uh, Manila looks fucking... Scary in this picture. Alright, Destroy All Monsters. Now, this is the big one, and they all look kind of cute, kind of chippy. In fact, Godzilla kind of looks like Godzilla Jr. from uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 in the Heisei era. But, you know, it's still got a lot to look at. It's got a lot of monsters going on. I'm glad Varen's down here, because he does not get the love he should get. <coughs> I'm dying. Oh. All Monsters Attack. Wow, no, this artwork, just no, God, no. Uh, Godzilla vs. Hedorah. Uh, this one looks okay. It, um, I don't know, it's just okay. I like to look into all these building pictures and see if anything means anything. Uh, Godzilla vs. Gigan. Gigan looks awesome, but what's going on with Godzilla space here? I am not a fan. Uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon. Uh, this... One, I, I, I guess Godzilla's going for the nuclear head look, but this isn't a Mushroom Cloud movie, so I don't know why it's there. The fighting at the bottom's kind of cool, but I, I'm still not a huge fan. Uh, one of my favorite ones from this, Godzilla vs. Mega Godzilla. Now, this artwork is amazing. This might be one of the best ones in this book. We now move on to Terra Mega Godzilla. Uh, Titanosaurus and Godzilla are not looking that hot here, and Mega Godzilla's passable. So, I'm not sure about that. We This just has special thanks and kind of notes and stuff like that. We get a picture of uh, Godzilla's spine as he crushes a city. That's kind of cool. Then we have the disc, and oh boy, I have a problem here. Do you see this? The disc that slide in and out? I don't like this. I can't stand this. I hate this. Uh, this is a big disappointment, and I guess it had to be like this because of it being a book. 
But, man, I would have honestly preferred just a standard, nice-looking box set box set compared to, compared to this. Uh, and that is it. Uh, I've still got this on the back, but, uh, I mean, I can, I can, I guess I can take that off now. It's stuck with the little glue stick things that I'll have to get off. And the back looks pretty good. Honestly, I like the back more than I like the front. So, with this set, I do have to, to point out that, um, like I said, unless you're a huge Godzilla fan, you can pass on this. Uh, honestly, the DVDs and previous Blu-rays are kind of better than what you're getting here unless you want true original Japanese versions. But if you grew up on the English dubs and you love the English dubs, like I'm a big fan of the English dubs, which is one of the reasons why on Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, we typically stick to doing the English dubs because that's what we grew up on in America and that's what we kind of enjoy talking about. But because of this, I've got to say, I don't know if I would get rid of older Blu-rays or DVDs, uh, except the Criterion Blu-ray. Pretty much everything that's on here is on there, so you can get rid of that. But uh, for like the classic media DVD releases, even though this is a Blu-ray release of Gojira, keep those. Those have some of the best special features when it comes to commentaries that you're going to get for Godzilla. So you definitely want to keep that. As for old school English dubs, it looks like VHS and DVD are still going to be your main go-to. So VHS Godzilla, you're still worth it in my book. I want my teacher dubs. Please and thank you. And uh, then for the few people who have, like, say, the Laserdisc, definitely keep those because, one, this is a kind of Godzilla artwork I would have liked to have seen throughout this. I would have liked to have seen a release that looked more akin to these artwork. I think they're just better. I think they look better. And I would have just rather have had them. So with that being said, Godzilla Criterion, you tried. And you know what? You did a good job for what we get in America. But the presentation, I'm not a fan of. I do not like this giant book. And I, and I, I am happy Criterion gave the love to give us a show a set on Blu-ray. That is awesome. It looks great, even though with some of them, Toho has 4K transfers of some of these movies. And they're working on doing all of them. They didn't give them to us. We got your basic 1080 HD transfers, which is fine. They look beautiful. You don't exactly need 4K, but some of these are also older transfers and Toho's holding out on us. They've got better transfers. So that's kind of sad. But what can I say? I'm a Godzilla fan. Uh, this was a birthday present uh, to myself, paid for by my dad. Uh, he didn't know it, but thanks, Dad. And, I don't know, I'm left kind of just going, where the fuck am I going to put this? It's not going to sit on a shelf, it's even kind of hard to display because it takes up so much room. It's, it's, a, it's a coffee book, but I don't want to leave it on the coffee table because of how it takes up so much space. Uh, I, I don't know, I guess, I'm half and half. Uh, I love it and hate it at the same time. Hopefully a lot of you can pick it up during Criterion sales and get it half off. Because you know what? If you can get it for, you know, $75 to $100, then absolutely worth the bang for your buck. Uh, but for those who bought it right away, like me, we mostly did it because we're huge Godzilla fans. And some of us have been burned in the past not picking up Godzilla Blu-rays as soon as they drop. Look at the price of the Godzilla vs. Biollante Blu-ray. Or even some of the out-of-print DVDs at this point from Sony. They're, they're, they're hit and miss. Now this is Criterion, so hopefully they will be in print for a while. But this is a bigger special edition. It's not like their normal Blu-ray box sets. So there may not be as many of them. In fact, a lot of Criterion fans were kind of upset that for the 1,000 release number 1000 spine they did Godzilla and they obviously put a lot of work in this but a lot of that work I felt kind of went, went the wrong way and I do have to kind of question if they understand the Godzilla fan base here in America I hate being so negative I really do and I'm, I'm gonna love watching the movies they're going to look fantastic, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm going to go through special features on all of that. 
but I, I just think this really misses the mark. So I love it and I hate it and I don't know what else to tell you. Check it out. Uh, by this point, there's tons of reviews and tons of scans out there that you can check out. With that being said, I'm going to get out of here. Check us out on Facebook. Go in the group. Tell everyone what you think. Check out the Facebook fan page where we post a lot of memes just to make you laugh. And uh, check out Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Atomic Age Saucer Cast, Jerry Hates Action, Cult Unknown, all these podcasts that I just kind of do all over the place. And I'm going to try to get back to making more videos for YouTube, including Cast V Horror. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking this out. Let me know in the comments. Did you pick it up? If so, what do you think about it? If not, why aren't you picking it up? Are you waiting for a price drop? Get a better deal on it? Are you turned off by the artwork? Are you turned off by the giant size of the book? Because, I mean, seriously. Blu-ray size compared to the box size or the book size. I mean, hell. It's taller than a laser disc, but not wider than a laser disc. And when it comes to VHS, it's still pretty big. I mean, this is huge. So, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Am I being too harsh on this? How do you feel about the artwork? Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time on Kill the Cast. Goodbye.